So last week's farewell parade for the Governor wasn't just an opportunity for the islands to say goodbye to Mr Roberts. There were also a few items of business to sort out. Keith Biles, as Speaker for the Legislative Assembly, was responsible for taking off the official sword from Mr Roberts. But why does a Governor need a sword? And what's the history behind it? I'm here to speak to Keith and find out a little bit more. Thank you very much for meeting with me. So how come we've got this wonderful sword here? How come you're looking after it? Who, okay. who does it normally live with? It's normally the governor's sword and it completes his formal uniform. It uh, is a very specific sword and it's only used now for governors. I guess the sword dates back to the fact that originally governors were generally military folk. Yeah, and that's it. And Yes. Um, the sword itself has an interesting history, not, not the, the, des the design. It's called a Mameluke sword and it dates back to, um, well, the early 1800s. The Mamluks were the traditional um, bodyguard of the rulers of Egypt and the French army and the British army uh, in their various um, actions uh, and campaigns in Egypt picked up the the use of the sword and they adopted it um, first of all unofficially and then from 1831 it was the designated official sword for generals and above okay. dress sword. So um, what makes this sword so special? It's an interesting sword in the sense that it's it's a, it's more of a scimitar than the straight swords and I'll, perhaps I'll show you. As you can see, it's a curved blade. The top part of the blade isn't, isn't sharpened, but the bottom end is, and it does still have a, quite a sharp point. The difference between this and any other Mameluk so sword is, first of all, there is an insignia on the, on the handle, and the way that the blade itself has been engraved. Now, these swords, as I said, were originally um, from 1831, uh, a regulation sword for generals. And if you look at this, this one's manufactured by, as you would expect, Wilkinson Sword. And if you look on this, as I say, apart from the, the handle, you've got the, the royal cipher there, and on the back there is similarly a crown and the, that decoration. So that's the governor's sword. It stays in my possession as Speaker of the House when we're between governors. And then when we're the new governor is appointed at his swearing in, um, I present him with the sword again to complete his uniform, which he holds until he, uh, he resigns or is reposted. And you're saying in the past, governors have been able to keep their swords? Yes, this one was given to us, we think, um, by Richard Ralph. Uh, when he was governor, when he retired, because they've stopped making them, we couldn't replace it, uh, so he gifted his sword, and this is it, um, for use by subsequent governors. So that's, that's the reason why. Um, we can't replace it. They've stopped making them. <laughs> Can I pick it up? Yes, of course. I don't know what sort of weight I thought it would have. Sure. Well, don't forget, it's a sabre, so it's, a, it's not a... It's not a sword you would poke at anybody. Okay, it's a big swishing sort of sword. Yeah. And uh, you've cleaned all the cake off it. Yes. Yes, that's a, that's a, a, a definite no-no. You shouldn't use a sword for cutting cakes. This one has been, and it took us a long time to, uh, to, to, to remove the stains. But, um, yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. It's all right. Put that right there. All right, well, yeah, thanks very much. Okay.